Well, hello everyone, and I'm going back to speedrun series, so uh, it's been a while, uh, been away, Christmas and everything, but the aim of this is to take you through the grading boundaries and to give you nice bits of advice to help you improve. And we're also going to look at what our opponent does and look at typical mistakes that you should be avoiding at this rating range. Now, I'm going to change my openings a little bit now and move on to the London system, which is an opening which I think is great for every ELO level. It's very simple to do. The first stage is to put the pawn on D4, and I'm going to try to break down my play into stages and talk about my thought process and the time I have. The second stage is to bring this bishop out and bring this knight out. You've got to develop your pieces. And then you create a pyramid like so with this pawn structure, which I'll do now. This is, shall we say, stage three. And the reason I brought this bishop out is it's on the other side of this pawn structure, so it's an okay piece. And generally when your bishop is threatened as such, you just drop it back here because if there's an exchange, you can open up as we're gonna see here, the rook on the h file, which can be very useful. So this is all very standard stuff. The next thing you've got to do, stage three, if you if you will, is to get these guys in the game. And now that my opponent has a good knight, I'm gonna just try and swap off his good pieces. You should always try to swap off your opponent's best pieces. And I'm gonna take with a queen because this is a very important move in the London system. So uh, let's let's go for that now and here moving the bishop to this square is the normal square and this is basically the opening over of the London system uh, my bishop can be a very nice piece in a lot of ways now we've got to think of a middle game stage here and I don't want to castle too soon because I might want to use this rook I want to see where my opponent's going to put his king so if he goes this way I might tack over there but he might want to try to go queenside. So if I gain some space and play a useful move on that area of the board, then it will put him off, hopefully, placing his king over there. So he's got a bit of a dilemma where to put that. And he's now put a pawn on this square, but I'm attacking that two ways. Uh, I think his idea is to try to bring his queen down to all the way here at the end. So again, it's an interesting decision here. I mean. I think I'm going to capture once and it's going to be more positional now and I'm just going to castle now so I don't lose the open file and okay he can now castle kingside safely at some moment but he has got the issue of this pawn and he's dropping a pawn there so a typical mistake my opponent's played he's played a pawn move he's not used his time time um, people at this level they really don't seem to use their time well um, four minutes he's got a pawn down a lot of pieces being exchanged I'm just covering his queen coming in there by the way and he played an unnecessary pawn move there again it's one of those mistakes pushing pawns without looking at the square deeply enough now my knight comes into this middle square this great square in the middle of the board attacking the queen and it's only a one pawn advantage one of the trickiest things in chess is winning uh, positions where you have an advantage and I'm now going to try to find other weaknesses in my opponent's position it's clear he's quite passive with his last move and the only weakness I can really see is this pawn here because when you're looking at a pawn at the base of a pawn structure and this one is at the base of the pawn structure it can't be defended by another pawn you can try to aim for that pawn and I'm going to do that now with the idea of just putting a little bit of pressure on that pawn because that also ties his pieces down. And I want to try to make my opponent's pieces as passive as I can. The f other option I've got is I want to take control of the open file. And my rook can now come over to, to the open A file, which can only be good news for me. Um, whenever your opponent plays move, try to work out what they're trying to do. And that seems to be a nothing move. As in, I can't see the aim of the rook going there. It doesn't seem to help my opponent, so I'm going to improve my pieces what am I going to do next well I, I want to be quite patient here because I don't think my opponent has many options maybe he should be kicking my knight away so you should always be searching for your opponent's best moves well done he found that move 
and that that is a good move because at least now my he forces my active knight backwards other useful moves i was thinking about playing there g4 to try to gain some more take some more squares under control maybe even g3 and king here but now he's moved his pawn back here i'd say this is a positional mistake pawn moves do make weaknesses and he's allowed my knight to come back into that lovely square and yet again, he's very tied down. I'm constantly thinking, what's my opponent's next move? He can't move his knight. This 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 drops. He hasn't got anywhere good for his queen. His rook hasn't got anywhere good. So he's, he's running out of good possibilities here. So I'm going to move my rook because I can't see any active play for him. And one simple idea is to increase the pressure on this pawn. Another idea I'm thinking of is to maybe get my queen, try to swap the queens off because I'm a pawn up making exchanges can be very useful but because of my patient play i forced him to make a mistake and this is something you can often do in chess you don't need to win games you can wait until your opponent loses them and with this move because he was running out of options i can win another pawn and my advantage continues to grow so i've just got to be a little bit careful here um let's make sure i put my pieces on good central squares the knight on a good central square I have a pass pawn, so eventually I want to try queening this one. Um, but I'm probably going to try to improve all my pieces. And now it's an ending. My king may also want to come in. But where's his knight going? Well, if it goes there, I exchange it. And he might want to come to this square. So I'm trying to re always restrict my opponent's pieces. And this move restricts that piece. His rook is restricted. He can't go to either of these squares. I'm covering them. And this kind of move you can tell immediately is a nothing move so I can improve my king. And I'm bringing my king towards the central, uh, a good central position here. Now I wanna improve my pieces to the maximum and the rook on the seventh rank looks very good. I actually missed this tactic, didn't I? Knight check. You're all gonna be screaming in the chat. Why didn't you win the rook, knight d7? Well, I suppose it's because I'm doing it a little bit at a time and I'm trying to plan this game out and the most simple way possible and my opponent has now spotted that all credit to him and we're going to have to now go into a more technical position but of course two pawns up it should be quite an easy win when my plan all along when you've got the extra pawns is to queen them uh, makes sense doesn't it so um how should we do that well um i'm gonna maybe try to use my king to come around i could have gone pawn on but i don't want him to blockade my pawns too easily for example bring this knight there so i want to have the opportunity to keep this pawn flexible and it really is a matter of time now he's dropping another pawn i will simply take that one and um, now i can support my pass pawn uh, venturing forwards which i'm going to do now He's trying to complicate the, the position. I'm not even going to take there because he has some activity. I'm going to go here just because it takes that square away from his knight. Again, I'm trying to restrict everything. I'm always looking for any kind of counterplay he's got. I can't see it. So I'm just going to push my pawn. And now my king can come and support this guy. I've only got 20 something seconds, so I better blooming hurry up, right? And uh, now I need to get my knight in a position to support this pawn. The c5 square looks perfect. So I'm going to try and quickly bring my knight around. I might pick up his other pawns on the way. Let's do that. We might as well. The more pawns, the better. He has got to check if he wants to annoy me. And now I'm going to come back. I'm always worried because I'm such a slow player. We can even pre-move that one. And he's going to have to give up his... Uh, knight from my pawn because it's just too strong I will queen and um, now well I'm just going to try to queen all my pawns quite simply and we can pretty much pre-move this uh, as we go so we don't need to think even too much about this let's get them all moving look at them all coming yeah here they come it's like Space Invaders. Uh, is that Space Invaders or Pac-Man? I don't know. Oh, God, I'm quite enjoying it. Should we get the other one to this square? Okay, so we need to get rid of his pawn. I'm enjoying myself too much here, guys. I'm going to take this pawn and get my other pawn to G6. So let's do this. And 
Um, I'm, I'm, I think he's gonna. I think I expect he will lose on time before me. Oh no! Here it comes. Pre-moving it one square at a time. All its way to glory. Oh, his king has escaped, and we're moving them up another square now. <laughs> I don't often get positions like this, so it's kind of, kind of, kind of quite pleasuring, in some very sick way. And let's see how many rooks we can get. <laughs> uh, and we'll probably lose on time now. And okay. Okay. Right. So that that was, uh, I think, um, a pretty solid game. And. Uh, we, we don't need to go over that. Uh, let's try to get another game in. Got the black pieces here. Okay, we're playing the same person actually, this time with the black pieces. And um, a lot of you, I'm going to try some of the openings which I specialize in, and, and another opening that I play, which is quite tricky to play. And I, I think you have to be careful when you're picking your openings at lower level. But as long as you really learn any kind of opening very well, it doesn't matter so much. And the opening I'm playing is the black line. Now, this is stage one get your pawn to this square and your knight here. I like breaking down openings into stages. Stage two is to control the center with the e-pawn. It doesn't actually even matter so much what your opponent plays. And now I want to develop this bishop, control some more central squares with this pawn, which I'm going to do, and maybe even help the advance of this pawn. Move my queen to give my center some extra protection. And because I haven't castled and my opponent has, I'm going to play quite unorthodox style here. And the unorthodox move I'm going to play, which is part of this opening idea, especially when they give you this hook to, to attach yourself onto, is g5, g4, opening up their king side. And I can do this because I'm controlling the center very nicely. And some of the mistakes that my opponent has made here, he's played a3 and h3, and he's played these two moves on the side of the board which are useless pawn moves i don't see the point of them what's especially a3 every loss of tempo is important now the other idea of this system is this knight comes around to f4 so i'm just going to continue bringing this knight around and there's no reason me to stop that maneuver at the moment i'm going to get my knight to this lovely square and he's made another move in front of his king and the first thing i'm thinking now is well i want to play this move h5 to open his king side up but i can even try taking over the center now because like i mentioned i'm defending the center very well and i'm threatening to win a piece so i'm starting to mobilize uh, my army here now this move uh, allows knight to b5 and again that's probably a good move but it looks a little bit complicated i'm trying to i'm trying to keep all my play as simple as i can today avoid even calculating and I've avoided that one just by playing this and we could castle queenside but I don't even see the need to castle in this position um I think this check is much stronger followed up by maybe I didn't need to do that check first the threat is often stronger than the execution but I want to just get on with some attack here so I'm just work working out wow that looks kamikaze style I, he had to move his king backwards. He's really asking for it now. And this move will win a piece. But, core, cool. is there something a bit more pretty here? This move doesn't help. I mean, simple is good. Let's just play this move, unleashing my queen against his king. And my opponent's played this all wrong. Again, he hasn't spent any time at all on his moves. I think we can even play this one because uh, he can't take it or be checkmate and he's got a bad position so if you are going to play blitz one thing i would say is make sure that you use your time wisely what's the point of playing five minute blitz if you've got two minutes three minutes left at the end of the, every game you should be using the time to think about your moves as wisely as you can um okay we're, we're trying to find someone else a different player now so we've played mad king eric and he's got a picture of old Trumpy boy there. And this is a quite an irregular move. But I'll tell you what, let's try that black line again. How much of that can you remember, that last game we played? Well, stage one was getting my knights towards the center. 
So I'm going to try to play it against this unorthodox opening. Stage one done. Stage two was, remember, controlling the center, getting my queen to this square. So let's do stage two. My opponent's playing a hippopotamus setup. And I must admit, if I was playing, you know, what's he doing? He's playing like an absolute lunatic. We're going to now finish that little setup there. And here, ideas of h6 and g5, they certainly don't make as much sense. So now I've done my first two stages, I'm looking at what my opponent's developed, and I'm thinking, well, if you're going to allow me to put two pawns in the center of the board, I will. So again, I'm trying to avoid doing any calculation in this game. And I'm looking, is there any threats there? No, I don't think so. Is my king scared to castle? Why should it be? I've got nice protection. He can try attacking with one pawn, it won't work. So I've castled. Next thing I want to do, I want to try to get this bishop out. The knight is in the way. I can move that knight, but can I gain any more space? Yes, I can. And I want to gain space on the queen side now. My pawns are very nicely defended. I'm gaining as much space as I can. Maybe I can use this pawn to attack his knight. That pawn wants to come here. I'm just going to stop him doing the moves he wants to play. I'm not going to allow him. And again, this is part of winning chess is frustrating an opponent. His knight wants to come in here, nice plan. So I need to get my bishop, I say square. And this next maneuver I'm about to play is a very traditional maneuver to meet such an idea. Okay, so he's trying to get an attack going. It shouldn't work. This square is something he's aiming for. At the moment, I can uh, simply capture it, but I wanna give my bishop a little bit more protection here. So I'm gonna move my knight so that my bishop has the opportunity of capturing his knight where it comes to that square. I'm really not scared about his attack. He can't checkmate me with a pawn and a knight. Don't get worried. If you're doing good moves, you don't deserve to get attacked. This is just a key rule. And I'm doing good moves here. I don't deserve to get attacked, so I'm not worried. Okay, he has one file. Does that scare me? No, it doesn't. I'm going to try to pick up this pawn at the moment. I have to say, his play is, is quite unique, though. He is playing very interesting chess, but at the end of the day, often these ideas, which are very wacky and aggressive, they often backfire because they don't have that foundation. You've got to play chess in a way like anything. You can't just become... You can't just become an international master chess player in a week. So many people think it's so easy to become great at chess. It takes years, if not decades, of um, training. It's the same in a position. Lots of people are very impatient. You've got to build your positions up logically. And you can see I've got a pawn up here. My opponent's king is actually weaker than mine, I feel, here. So it's patience. Patience in building your position. Pulling the trigger when you, we can, but only, only at that situation. Okay, so he's aiming to castle, and he's still playing interesting chess here. And I think now I'm going to push in the center before he gets a chance, because if he moves his knight backwards, that will block his plan. And if he comes forwards, well, I can simply take this one. He didn't calculate that one. He's moving too soon. I'm not really sure what he's thinking here, because I've not just won a pawn, but now I've got a very deadly idea of capturing this one. And again... Uh, I'm not being funny, but a lot of the moves I'm playing, I'm not really doing anything special. My knight is attacked. Let's move it and create an attack against the rook. I've won uh, three pawns without really calculating here. You can see my opponent's maverick ideas have backfired. They didn't have enough firepower. And in this position, well, I'm going to take here, not to win a pawn, but mainly because... I can see we have an open file towards his king, and I want to bring my rook to that open file, which I will do without thinking, and see how he's going to deal with that one. I now should be winning a queen. Uh, we can take this one. His queen is not running away. Um, if his king runs away, we will take his rook as well, which we're going to do, and we might as well take every darn piece. Let's try to get look at those checks, look at the ways or bringing all your pieces into the game. And it's checkmate in two moves here. One move there. And the next move will be to checkmate on this square. So, um, well, we can see there my, my opponent's opening. Uh, you know, it's all nice and good trying to play in a very exciting way. But 
you've got to base it on foundations and hence why the opening is important you know um, I've got loads of stuff on my YouTube channel um, on free openings if you want to spend a bit more money and master spend any money and master them to a real level then you can check out ginger GM and my chessboard courses let's now go back to the London system you remember this one this is the first game we had and I'm going to start by bringing my bishop out because remember we want to create the pyramid with our pawns but I want my bishop on the other side of that wall but we first bring the knight out so two pieces out and here I'm gonna now create this pyramid so let's just do that I'm just gonna stick again to these basic opening ideas that I've discussed the knight now comes out this is all very normal my opponents played a good setup remember when there's a standoff with the bishops here I like dropping the bishop back because you get the opportunity to open up the H file if uh, if everything goes okay. But my opponent's played it well. He's moved his bishop to a good square. And this is something that not a lot of players tend to do when they face the London system. But this is also a mistake, I feel. It's a very small mistake, but it's a mistake. And it shows a lack of patience, which I think is, again, very common at this rating boundary. It would have been much better just to connect the rook to the king, move the queen here. And if you're going to make an exchange and it only helps your opponent, then why make that exchange? And having this open file can only help me. Well, it's clear he wants to castle this way. Um, so yet again, I'm going to start advancing on that area of the board just to wait and see where his king's going to go. If his king goes that way, I've got a start of a pawn storm. He should probably be trying to play e5 in this position, but one of the good things about the London system is that your central square, this one here, is so well defended that you don't need to panic. But I have to say, so far, my opponent playing very, very well. Now, I'm gonna move this knight behind my pawn I've got to work out, am I worried about him capturing there? Not really, because I can take back with a nice piece, get it to a center. Am I worried about him coming on? Not really, because my knight has many ways to go. If I want to be adventurous forwards, otherwise I come back. He has gained some space, so he's played well, my opponent here. Um, the other idea of bringing my knight here, if he castles queenside, it's a little bit nearer his king. Um, but let's see how he continues this one. I think this was his only slight mistake. I don't like... You know, he's helping me improve my structure there. Another good move from my opponent because he's played a move which creates a threat, my pawn. So I'm going to uh, make sure I deal with that threat and I'm just going to bring my rook to guard it. But it's not really a move I wanted to play. Uh, and like I say, my opponent in this game is certainly playing better than the guys in the other games. His knight is trying to find a way in, but he's forgot about his center. Uh, and again, you know, it, it, you have to look wherever there's a tension in the position, that's where your eyes should be glued. And this is the only area of the board, the center, where that's that tension with these pawns. And he's moved his eyes away from that. And that allows me now to win a very useful pawn. It's a central pawn, meaning if I get to any ending, if I get to, you know, you know further on in the game, the material counts more. And um, I'm now, well, quite happy. I want to get my last piece into the game. Okay, let's see what my opponent's trying to do. We always have to be wary, especially when they move their queen in to your position. He can't, it's very hard for him to break through my pawns, but he might be trying some sacrifice with this one. Now, as I said, I've won a pawn, so I welcome any exchanges. And his queen is looking a little bit scary. I would not have been able to play this move if he hadn't opened my rook up. But now I'm going for exchanges because I've got extra material. I want to keep my plan simple. Um, offering the queen exchange. Also a little cheeky threat to the pawn down there. You just have a little, little bit of that pawn please mate. Yeah, we like a bit of pawn don't we? Pawn, pawn grabbing. Of course that's what I meant. What did you think I meant? dirty and we're trying to get the queens off the board and just keep it very simple it's very hard winning one positions in chess it's one of the hardest things to do actually and i think it's something that 
many of us like struggle from winning one positions but as long as we um you know just be very aware um try to stop our opponent's activity um not be scared of tactics still you still got to be t entering tactics if you're if you're up a material but also just trying to not give the initiative away too much because as soon as your opponent gets a bit of initiative it's very easy to go wrong and i think really all the games i've played today they've been very uh there hasn't really been any tactics well there has been there's been subtle tactics but there hasn't been anything that i hope even the beginners out there who are watching this video won't sort of be capable of playing themselves you know i've kept things in one or two moves tactics these are all things that you should be seeing if you started off in chess it's more the think process behind them okay well my opponent ha had had enough there and look at this i'm getting an advert for the real beard is this trying to tell me something what's it trying to tell me you think i can pull mine off do you it is actually real believe it or not phillips is telling me to shave my beard and on that note, I'd love to know your thoughts on the shaving of my beard. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to try to get yeah, try to get back doing some of these videos. Please like and subscribe uh, to to the channel. It's it's very uh, be very important for you to do so. Uh, helps me out a lot. Um, my nice camera that I use for filming has died, so I'm using a bit of a lower standard, but hopefully it's still good quality enough. And we'll be back with more videos very shortly. Thank you very much. Remember to like and subscribe.